Welcome back to Muscle Mommies. This is Arif. This is Nona. Um, and we're here for episode 17. Today yes. we're going to talk about gym tips. Yep. That comes from like everything ranging from like exercise tips for certain movements um, and maybe like laying out your schedule. Some things that we found that have benefited us in the gym uh, we just want to share with you guys. Exactly. These are just random and hopefully you take it and it helps you and with you your workouts. With yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you want to go off? Um, yeah, I'll start off. Um, I want to talk about something that has changed my deadlift for life and this is rdl specifically and i know that there's a lot of people who have uh like struggle with the movement for rdls and i know that when i first started i struggled too so i just didn't do the exercise i was like i hate the way that it feels uh, my first tip is just do it even if it's uncomfortable in order for you to get better at the movement you have to keep doing it but there are certain keys that literally saved my life when it comes to rdls um and i'm gonna share a couple with you one of them is as you're lowering the bar <clears throat> The way you want to imagine the bar lowering towards the floor is by using your your butt to close a car door. Like when your hands are full and you go, mm. like that's how you have to imagine it. Like your legs stay stationed, everything stays stationed, and the only thing that moves is your butt goes back to knock the door and shut it closed. When I started thinking of it that way, it changed my life. Another one, and these are all for RDLs. Um, is you want to imagine that your hands and your arms are strings. So when you're bringing the weight up, you're not using your arms, you're not shrugging, like they literally only exist as like strings from your shoulder and the bar lowers to the ground uh, with your hips. So it's like your arms are not holding onto the weight, they're just hanging there. They're just holding sense. it. Yeah, and okay. it moves because of your body. Yeah. Um, and the last tip is the movement um, for RDLs um, can sort of help you with the sumo deadlift or a deadlift in general. I want you to imagine once you've mastered an RDL that a deadlift is an RDL first and then like a squat to lower the weight down into the floor. Whoa. Does that make sense I first? liked that. So you okay. RDL to your shins and then, because if you go any further, you start leaning forward in your back arches, right? RDLs have a limit to them. Yeah. So you come all the way down to where your back is straight and your hips are as back as they can get and then you lower the weight to the ground by sitting like a squat okay and then on your way back up it's like you leg press the floor and once you're at this mo mo portion you hip thrust forward whoa literally life-changing if you remember like that like when you start from the floor think of it as like i'm leg pressing first and then i'm gonna thrust my hips forward in a hip thrust life-changing it will change your deadlift forever you want to know something yeah I've never did a barbell deadlift ever in my life. But you also have a spine problem. True. So I don't even yeah. know, like, it might hurt, right? That's what I would assume. But, I was, like, but I was like, if I do want to do it one day, you're coming with me. Oh, <laughs> I would love to be there when you damage yourself. <laughs> Stop, don't say that. Knock on wood. Knock on no, wood. No, I'm not going to let you do it. I would cry, literally, <laughs> okay. if something happened to you. I would cry with you. Yeah, just because I know how painful it was for you. To, it's not even, yeah, the pain is obviously painful yeah. but the pain of not being able to lift is more painful <laughs> it do be it yeah. do be yeah. yeah but maybe so you've never done a barbell one I mean, you could do it easily with lightweight i would love to be there yes you've done dumbbell though yeah rdls yeah yeah with dumbbells only i love my dumbbells only. yeah i do too but yeah it's just convenient mm -hmm. i don't know but um i love the tips especially yeah. the deadlift and especially the car door one because i feel like a lot of people like um use their lower back yeah. Rather than just like boop. Yeah. Boop. Like yeah. it's a perfect metaphor. It's like a shove backwards. Yeah. Like boop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. Also, like um, since we're on the topic of RDLs, like a tip that like has helped me is that like when you're like going down and coming up, like act like this. this I know is what you're graphic, gonna say. But act like you're butt cheeks are stretching oh yeah my, literally i knew exactly where I you were going and it works it works, it works. the mind to muscle connection once you think that is insane yeah because then you're just using your glutes instead of like for example your lower back or like something else yeah. you know like your shoulders or back or anything but it's just like just act like your glute cheeks or like your butt cheeks are like spreading yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah dude okay so speaking on that i just want to yeah. before you keep going since we're on that topic so your glute has like a lengthened and a shortened position. Mm. And in RDLs, it's lengthened. So that's why she's saying like, imagine imagine it's stretching. And I know those words might be unfamiliar to some people, but you can sort of like 
visually imagine it when movements have you hinge at the hips and you're literally like your cheek spreads between your back and your legs that's when it's lengthened and when you have like a hip thrust and you squeeze that's when it's shortened okay. so if you do that same visual for any exercise that has you hinge like for example like a lunge you know how they tell you in order to get it to work for your glutes more you have to hinge forward so anytime you do this hinge and you imagine your cheek like stretching over your back and your lower you literally will make every movement movement connect with your glutes so well and that took me a long time before i do it did it i knew it was lengthened but now i can literally be like oh like my skin is stretching <laughs> my muscles are stretching and then I squeeze and it's good. You know what I'm saying? It really works. Do you want to explain to them what lengthened and shortened is and like what the benefits or like whatever part of the glute? Yeah. Um, so lengthen basically just means like the, the way that your muscle is sitting during the movement, right? And it's important that when your muscle can be trained in both lengthened and shortened positions that you do both positions in order to train optimally. So um when you're scheduling your workout, for example, for your glutes, um, or example, like for things like the biceps, uh, there's different heads of the bicep. There's the long head, there's the short head. Um, and it's important to find exercises that hit both of those heads, for example, for the bicep, in order to grow it properly. Um, so, sorry. Um, it's So when you see people like, if you just do regular curls, you're not hitting your entire bicep. If you do like, just RDLs, you're not optimally training your glutes. Um, so that's why there is like, even though some exercises are great for your glutes and you're like, I feel this one more, um, like I feel my hip thrust more in my glutes than I feel my RDLs, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be training them in the lengthened position because that's gonna be more beneficial if, if you follow up in a routine that has both in them. So I would just recommend for things like the glutes, you do the shortened one first and the lengthened one after. There's also a mid-range, right, I think. Um, so shortened one, like hip thrust coming first prior to your like lunges, um, your RDLs and things like that, um, is gonna be really beneficial because you're gonna see the most contraction and activation, I think, in shortened positions mm -hmm. for like the glute. Exactly, and because you, because you, sorry, I thought someone's coming. Um, before you get that, I mean, where, can, where can I speak? <laughs> when you do the shortened position first, I feel like because you're contracting it so much and you feel it so much more, the mind to muscle connection is greater. And that's why when you do the lengthened version. Um, you're doing your RDLs and you're like, my glutes are on yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah. You feel it a little bit more than like, oh, like other places of your body yeah yeah and i i'm i swear by mind to muscle connection because i think that while it's not present your exercises are your workouts are not as effective and take it from someone who's like really quad dominant and i struggle to grow my glutes right and i feel like i've made a lot of progress especially with the genetics that i have and being super quad dominant i have found that it's it's necessary for me, one, to start in the shortened position, but two, that's where I think that activation exercises are beneficial. It's not that your muscles need to be activated, and that's where people have this dilemma and this argument with it. They hate that, that terminology, and I can agree. Um, I just use what's been said about it because it's everyone's familiar with it, but your, your glutes are never turned off. There's this theory that, oh, because you sit on them all day, they need to be activated but mm -hmm. they don't turn off um but when i say glute activation i just mean let's do some isolation work or sometimes after i do my regular four sets of hip thrusts where i'm training close to failure i will do a pump set like where i do like 20 30 reps just so my glutes mentally are on fire and then i will move if i want to do my squat and mm -hmm. i will feel it more in my glutes when i get dominated by my quads and mm. it's helped me so so much because normally like my mind will go straight to my quads you know um because they they grow so easily they're they're super sensitive so basically like in regards to like the term activating it's basically just warm up your glutes yeah and, yeah. and create that strong presence mm. of mind to muscle connection like you yes. walk around like my glutes are on fire so no matter what you do um, you feel it most. And this is like every body part. Like you wanna see more tricep growth, literally like start a lot of your movements with isolation movements. Cause mm -hmm. a bench press, even though you might wanna hit it, obviously is targeting your chest more. Um, just like for me, I might wanna squat, but squats are 99% of the time gonna target my quads more. So if I want to still see glute progress, but I still wanna do those movements, I hit the glutes first, you mm -hmm. hit the triceps first. Mm -hmm. So yeah, your squat's gonna be weaker, your bench is gonna be weaker once your triceps fatigued, once your glutes fatigued a little bit, uh, but you're gonna be feeling it a lot more. A lot more. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's worth, it, it. that's why you just, 
pick and choose what are your goals exactly you know yeah 100 percent. like um actually i'm really happy that we're on the topic of mind to muscle connections um i think as as you as well mind to muscle connection is extremely important basically as the term is mind to muscle connection it's basically like whenever you do an exercise just like imagine that muscle working you know it's that simple and i feel like it really does help like with like well i don't want to say muscle growth but just like helping that muscle feel the burn in some sense yeah. like actually working because a lot of people like let's say you're doing a squat you could do a squat but you're just moving you know like you're moving you're not really exercising that muscle group you know yeah but when you do a squat with intention like oh i'm gonna feel this in my like glutes a, l- a little bit more than like my quads then you're actually gonna feel it in your glutes a lot more than your quads i agree and yeah. you're not gonna just do a movement you know mm-hmm. like i remember like a while ago um when we were like training with like a a friend of mine she was like squatting and i like brought that up to her attention and she's like bro i i it does make a difference you know and it does like truly yeah 100 percent. and like i found like okay let me give you like an example for me i found that like i was not feeling my real rear delts when i would Mm -hmm. do a specific movement Mm -hmm. and the movement was like this cable like crossover i was like struggling to find a way to feel it in my rear delts i was feeling it in my upper back uh, not upper back i think i like i was literally like probably pulling incorrectly as well that's the reason i wasn't really feeling them in my rear delts um so then i was I did have another movement that tore my rear delts up. Like, not tore, sorry. Oh, I thought, I thought you got an injury. I was like, girl. <laughs> no, like, like on fire, on fire. I see. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm tired of not feeling that other one in my rear delts. So I'm going to do five, six sets of this one exercise that I feel in my rear delts. And when I'm really connected with the, my rear delts on my back, I'm going to go do that exercise. And me doing that every back day, every push or pull day or whatever, I started to now that exercise completely works for my rear delts. And I swear I was getting zero activation before. Obviously, like my that muscle group is working. So when I activation, I mean like that mental presence. It was not it was non existent. And now that's one of my favorite rear delt exercises. And it just came with conscious training. Like mm-hmm. I knew that needed work and I knew that it could have been a variety of things. It could have been my form was awful, but because that that feeling wasn't there, I was having a hard time relating to the movement. Mm -hmm. Once you feel it in your glute, once you feel it in your rear delt, the movement is natural. Exactly. Once you do it once with the correct form and that that mind-to-muscle connection there, you will realize how that movement needs to be performed. Like once I realized how my glutes work in an RDL, now it's like so easy to com- do an RDL with perfect form, you know? And like not hurt your lower back because that's a very common like injury in regards yeah. to RDL or like squatting or, or anything. Yeah, deadlifts yeah. especially, yeah. So mind to muscle connection is extremely important. And like the thing is like, like when you have that mind to muscle connection light weights start burning too yes oh yes you know so, so like i see like sometimes like like i remember like a while ago this was when we were both like inexperienced but we were going to the gym and one of my friends was like the abductor machine she had like a hundred and something pounds and she was like oh this is like lightweight like easy but then like once we brought the concept of mind to muscle connection you can't you couldn't she couldn't do it anymore yeah, because she you had realize to drop how much it down of other things yeah you were using. yeah you're using a little bit of your quads yeah. and like other parts of your body to like push it open but like once you lower that weight and you truly have that mind muscle connection like instead of 100 pounds that 30 pounds works a lot more you know yeah so i agree it's, it's crazy it's crazy yeah, so like never make fun of people who are using lightweight because maybe they're really in tune with the mind to muscle connection. Yeah, dude, I've yeah. been on like a machine before, like literally like the lightest weight yeah. setting, like I shut, like I'm shaking. Like when you really connect with it, you're like, this hurts. This hurts. Is, and it's like burning. 20 pounds. Yeah. Especially with like triceps. Oh my God, like my triceps, like if I'm doing cable pushdowns and I'm moving slowly and I'm imagining my triceps stretching at the top, and I'm like, Ooh. it literally is so painful. Juicy. So painful. Something yeah. else that helps with that is slow movements. You know what? Let's bring tips of how to achieve mind muscle connection. Slow movements. Yeah. Controlled slow movements. Yes. Okay. So yeah. for, I think exercises that lengthen it, um, slow. Does that make sense? So like while you're doing your RDLs, if you're having trouble feeling in your glutes, like literally shut your eyes and on your way down, slow super slow and imagine your glute strength lengthening just like with triceps on your way up as it 
lengthens, imagine it lengthening. And for the shortened position, something that helps with mind to muscle connections is pauses. So mm -hmm. in your in the shortened position, when you're hip thrusting, hold at the top. Hold that squeeze. Yeah. The clinch. Yeah. <laughs> like isolation, um, iso movements for like bicep curls, like hold it at the top and just squeeze, like flex that yeah. muscle, like when you're showing it off. Like yeah. flex it with the weight right there. And you're and like, then, ah, it's gonna be so literally. painful. And then just just do those things super slowly and super intensively. And then you're gonna re remember how that felt. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do them normally um, or choose your tempo of choice. And it's, yeah. it's going to be a lot better than it was. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And like, as you said, closing your eyes, I think that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. And like, OK, I remember when I used to go to like a woman's only gym. That was like the closest to a public gym that I've been to. <laughs> a woman's only gym. I Wait, started, what was, it was total women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't even exist anymore, I think. Right. Wait, they closed. I think they're bankrupt. It makes sense. They were horrible gym. It was a, an empty Hor god awful bro yeah which i was like what i was gonna say which one did you go to but you could tell me after but yeah. i remember i had been to one before and it's probably someone that we went yeah to. yeah but um i started wearing hats right because i kept on closing my eyes when i was doing workouts <laughs> and i was like i don't want people to think i'm crazy but you should be closing your eyes because because why you're eliminating distractions and the only thought that you have is that muscle working yeah and you know what if you want wear a hat because less distractions you know yeah i close my eyes a lot but i will not close my eyes if i'm like heavy lifting yeah you don't want to like pass out or yeah. something but like when i'm doing those like most of my movements i mean i body build most of the time so i'm like doing the weight that i can do for a lot of reps especially those like last few reps where i'm like i can't do it i'll be like yes you can and i'll shut my eyes and i'll just i'll just send it i'll just connect with the movement that i have it's you know like i've said this before like the best kind of training is mindful training mm -hmm. just like the best kind of anything is mindful mm -hmm. mindfulness when you're doing it like when you're watching a show to be mindful when you're eating to be mindful and when you're training try to be mindful like try to be there with the movement like and it gets as experienced lifters it gets hard to be that way yeah you've done this every day for years it's the mach the movement is second nature mm -hmm. so it's hard to get in there and be like i'm gonna literally almost meditate like be mindful of the lift that i'm doing when mm -hmm. it's so familiar to you you're just doing it exactly you know like and you're familiar with it in a successful way like you feel all the exercises the mind to muscle connection is there but even like a, the most experienced lifter i promise you they probably would relate like mindful training is everything mm -hmm. like to in the moment every single lift treat it like that lift is the only thing you're focused on for that moment like you know and it's hard to do that that human nature just not be completely present mm -hmm. mindful lifting could change your lifts forever 100 percent. truly like i hope you guys listen to this episode and truly incorporate it into your routine and like literally like dm us and let us know if, yeah. if it made a change if you liked it what you liked what you didn't like if you're tr struggling with it like please dm us yeah yeah you have our ads and we'll place it again but yeah just like we're here for you guys because it was hard for me to achieve it mind mind to muscle connection it was kind of difficult it takes me it took me a few years yeah i, I served for the longest time few by i mean couple mm -hmm. i literally was going through the motions and it was frustrating i feel like for me and also when i train people mm -hmm. like my close friends and stuff and i take them to the gym i can tell that they get frustrated with mm -hmm. that too they'll be like i just don't feel it like they'll be doing an exercise and they'll be like so what does it work but for me now i can never see an exercise before do it and also with the way that like i see them weight moving or the i can literally do it and tell you what muscle group it works you know what um what it, do you think we started feeling it a little bit more once our muscles kind of grow a little bit more yeah you know what i think yes okay i think it comes with success in yeah. the field like success like as in muscle growth and I think I think this the time investment. Like mm -hmm. when people say like when people try to rush that process and go, my mind to con muscle connection isn't there, and I'm it's like when did you start lifting? Like two months ago. I'm like you're fine. Like I really do think that's a difficult thing to achieve. And one day I know this this will happen for someone who like lacks this because it happened to me. It happened to any everyone who like I knew that got started in the gym. One day you're gonna do a movement that made no sense, mm -hmm. like an RDL, and you're like, how does this work my glutes? How does this work my hamstrings? You're gonna do it, and you're gonna be like oh my god my glutes are on fire oh, and that day you're gonna be like i did it like it's a milestone and it's cool to be like i have good mind to muscle connection there's this guy i saw on tiktok where he was blowing up because like he could flex different parts of his back oh i think i know what you 
Yeah. yeah. And that's hard to do. That's mind to muscle connection because you have to activate that part of your muscle to flex. Yeah. Like, same way like I can flex my bicep. It's because I'm, I'm very present with the way that my bicep feels. Yeah. But I cannot like flex like, I don't know. The way, it's almost like a, how a lat spread is difficult because you really have to connect with your lats to do it. And, and, and it, it's something that you have to practice, mm-hmm. you know? Like, it's like being able to sit here and just flex your hamstring without curling it. Like, like it's a talent, you it know? It is. Um, and it, it's when people contract their abs. You know, there's that guy on TikTok who can contract his yeah, abs in three different down. ways. Yeah, That's that was awesome. crazy. It's, yeah. it's a mind-to-muscle connection, you know? Yeah. Like, it's being able to connect with that different part of your body and, and recognize that it can flex in different ways. And, mm-hmm. and I don't know, like, it's, it's a flex. <laughs> <laughs> it's a flex. <laughs> For, like, Bro, pun intended. Have you seen... Um, I, it, well, his username is Joe Aesthetics, but he does the alien gains flex on his chest. And goes, <laughs> that was great. I was like, bro, honestly, like that's that's like talent. It is. Literally. It's yeah. hard. It's yeah. like, can you flex your chest? Some girls kind can. Of. I can like move a boob. Yeah, I can and like move the other boob barely, and I also like make a weird face when I do it. Like I'm like, like, like concentrating. <laughs> <laughs> but like we can yeah you know but guys can do it more than we can do it and what is it it's maybe because we store more fat there like they have more muscle maybe. purely like yeah so it's that same concept that you were saying once the muscle grows it's easier to mm-hmm. do it um yeah you know like i i don't know like it comes with time and but it it makes your training more effective for sure yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. um you got any other tips like maybe outside of mind to muscle connection <laughs> no actually i don't know this is kind of, oh, does it touch muscle? Cream? I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. But in regards to like deadlifting, RDLs, squatting, um, lunging, basically any like lower body exercise, like pretend like you're pushing the ground away. Yeah. Like instead of just bringing up the weight, like push the ground away with, yeah. your, with your heels, actually. Like push through your heels, push the ground away when you come up. Yeah, I really yeah. like that because I feel like people pull. Mm-hmm. but it's a push it's movement. a push yeah people be like oh i have to tug this way yeah up. but really it's let that weight sit where it's sitting and move it only with your with legs the, yeah push and it's kind of like my muscle connection because you're like you know it's like a leg press it's the leg press <laughs> yeah yeah it, like that's exactly how mind to muscle connection feels it's just like <laughs> and you know what you just gotta do it yeah. you know and then you'll know what we're talking about 100 percent. 100 percent um what else oh i mean like i don't would this be a tip but like in regards to glute based versus quad based let's do it let's talk about let's it let's talk about <laughs> it it's the okay. hinge of the hip bro it's the hinge of the hip it's yeah. the it's the knee past the toes that's all yep. you need to know the simplest way to put it like your knees passing your toes the more it goes towards your toe and past your toes which is safe by the way mm-hmm. is the more quad focused the mm-hmm. more your knee stays right above your ankle and your hips fly back, glute based. Glute based. So people like, <clears throat> like for example, step ups. Mm-hmm. Step ups are great for your glutes, right? How do you know your step ups are targeting your glutes? When your hips are hinging back and your knee is staying above your ankle. Literally. You, but it, it's not that like when it goes above your toe, you won't be hitting your glutes because mm-hmm. it's a powerful movement for the glutes. It's always going to have glutes up. Yeah. But you'll just see more quad focus. So we're Period. talking about how to make it a little bit more biased. It's not going to completely change the movement. For example, squats, right? Mm-hmm. You can make a squat glute bias by shoving your hips behind mm-hmm. and leaving less knee over toe right Mm -hmm. but that doesn't make it a glute focused movement Mm -hmm. it's not going to be mostly glute it's going to make it more glute biased Mm -hmm. squats are always going to favor your quads Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying period just like hip thrusts are always going to favor your glutes but how do you make it more quad focused you bring your ankles in so at the bottom of the movement your knee is above your toe you get what i'm saying Mm -hmm. it's the as soon as you think of it that way you'll be able to see every movement for a glute or quad focus Mm -hmm. period like uh steer master you know oh how you posted that tiktok yeah yeah yeah. you, you explain boop. yeah explain to them um i i posted a tiktok that was basically like when you get like obsessed with like focusing all these exercises on your glutes um even when you do the stair master you move you move forward and it, sometimes the visual isn't there but like if you're stepping right like this it's sort of always gonna it could favor your quads you know mm-hmm. like but if you lean forward you've created that hinge 
that wasn't there before and mm. now your hip your glute is in the lengthened position you could feel it too like it's juicy it's so juicy, it's so juicy. you know i want to talk about that okay <laughs> let's go i want to talk about something that i i just want to address so there's tons of girls who will say like hey i built my glutes with the stairmaster and they get attacked Okay, I just want to say this. I just want to say this. They get attacked. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that, yes, effectively training and growing any muscle group is going to require stimuli, like stress. And after a certain point, you cannot do, like, crazy. You can't grow your, your muscle group without a lot of stress, and that equals weight. So when you mm -hmm. see someone with massive biceps, he did not grow that with air curls. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, but i think there's exceptions mm -hmm. so when i just want to point out the fact that i think that when when girls say that like some people can mean harm and some people can maybe know that they're lying and they're just trying to make a really viral video that mm -hmm. they know is going to appeal to the general audience who don't know much and that video can get like 50 million views if they wanted it to you know because like it's almost like the 12 3 12 3 30 yeah that appeals to a larger group of people that's why it's like so popular um because not a lot of people are comfortable lifting weights mm -hmm. but i swear i believe and I feel like this is a debatable topic. I believe that there are some women that are able to grow massive glutes with just the Stairmaster. And I'll tell you why. Because first examples, things like your biceps, pull movements, pull. Testing? Okay. Okay. Um, so I was saying with pull movements, it's really hard to, to grow your muscle without a lot of stimuli. Because like, mm -hmm. think about it, like what resistance is your leg getting? But even like air squats, there's a lot of weight going into it. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's like, a different movement. It's your body weight that's, you know. Mm -hmm. Like those push movements are sort of a, a little bit easier. Like push ups, it's your body movement. Like mm -hmm. you can do dips, mm -hmm. and these push movements can grow your muscle um, effectively because there's a there's body weight involved, right? Yeah. And for example, there are people who are quad dominant who can grow their quads massively, like massively. I'm not like I'm, I'm obviously not like absurd, but yeah. like big quads with just air squats i am one of those people like i can have juicy big quads and i could literally just play volleyball all day that's exactly what happened to me in like high school do you get what i'm saying and i i feel like when people are incredibly glute dominant like there are people who are quad dominant which basically just means that your muscle takes less stimulus to grow mm -hmm. stimuli to grow I believe with how how studies prove that step ups have a, the highest glute activation above any exercise mm -hmm. that a girl who's incredibly glute dominant could do the stairmaster and grow glutes exactly I, that's my argument exactly and i was thinking about this like a long time ago when i read that first study that was like step ups are crazy for the glutes i was like so these girls could not be lying yeah like a lot of people attacked them and they always make response videos they're like but that's what i did yeah and people are like there's no way that yeah you just did that you know yeah. like you were born with it then but they're like no i didn't have glutes and then yeah. i did that and i had glutes and it's because they were glute dominant exactly they started eating more and they did the stairmaster and it worked in their favor so if you have beautiful genes like that i have a theory <laughs> i have a theory <laughs> that that could really work you know it wouldn't work for me ever in my lifetime yeah but it could help support a build if mm -hmm. i started adding that near the end of my exercises but of course like excess cardio is never really going to help with weightlifting but, but, but we all know this like mm -hmm. to a large degree and again like in regards to like push-ups why are push-ups easier because like if you're thinking about it like it's kind of half of your body weight they're pushing up and down you, you know? have a large stimulus. but in already. regards to like step up squats that's your entire body weight like vertically yeah. you know it's a lot of it's weight. a lot of weight you know and you're like you're stepping up that like a hundred and something pounds obviously your glute is going to find a little bit of growth yeah you know and like to be honest when quarantine first hit and all gyms were closed i was doing stadium stair like sprints and that's like a lot of step ups you know yeah. constant step ups and my legs have never seen like they were the biggest it's ever been that's what i'm, I'm saying not it even works kidding. for some people biggest it's ever been that like with weightlifting i never could achieve that yeah well maybe i don't know why but like with that it was just crazy i've never seen a gains like that ever in my life so it's like never like i don't know never like criticize someone because yeah. like they they're like oh this helped me might not help you because everyone's bodies are different but it could work it yeah. could work it's because we know it to be true in other ways there's exactly. people who have calves bigger than any bodybuilder i've ever seen before and they go i just walk a lot yeah why or is that bicycle 
bicycle Be- yes and it's just because their genes they are heavily dominant exactly. in that region and they literally their walk is enough stimuli for the calf to grow for someone who doesn't have that kind of gene that it's going to take like for example the the relative stimuli would be like 700 pounds mm-hmm. people like that exist mm-hmm. and i feel like calves is the perfect example because we see it day to day like i'll see mm-hmm. a dad with like massive calves he's like i don't even exercise but it's literally like like must like muscle it's not mm-hmm. even like he's just he's bigger he doesn't have bigger frame just these massive massive quads looks like he's literally only goes to the gym and train quads he's like yeah i just walk <laughs> you know and there's people out there throwing 400 pounds on their calves every day and it can't grow yeah you know and for me it's like i played volleyball and then i had these juicy quads yeah you know like now i train quads and they've grown even more from then you know Period. but i had these quads and people were just like oh my god and i'm just like yeah i just jump up and down when i'm playing volleyball i'm just doing squats but again but again it makes sense because when you're doing volleyball it's like what an hour of you in squat position yeah but what bodybuilder or, or gym person are you gonna see like holding an hour in squat at the gym you know no. so yeah. i think different varieties of exercises could work and give it a try you know sometimes something will work a little bit more than others yeah yeah maybe 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 but yeah um Let's go into something else. Maybe Another we can tip. talk about our favorite exercises that have changed like specific muscle groups. Okay. Okay, I'm down. Also, let's go into tips and tricks about upper body too after this. Okay, no, let's do a tips and tricks for upper body first. I'm okay. done. Okay, okay you so start like, us off. Let me tell you with like lat pull downs, I found out that when you pull that bar down, lead with your elbow. And for anyone who's like on my app, like I always emphasize lead with the elbow. You know, it's just like, you're gonna feel a lot more and you're gonna feel like less of you trying to push it down using your biceps. Cause leading with your elbow kind of targets your back muscles a lot on your lats a lot more than like your biceps and stuff like that. And also this is something else. A lot of people like wanna would say this isn't correct or if this doesn't work. And I've heard a lot of arguments about this, but personally I think it does work a little bit for me. Um when you do lat pull downs, like instead of holding it like this, you kind of put your thumb over the bar like a hook grip. like a hook yeah i kind of feel a lot more in my Instead back just like this grip yeah I, it's I not a it. massive like significant change but it, there's a little side change that i do feel yeah i think that stops you from maybe like using your body more. And, yeah it's like a string it's it like a string. It a string exactly exactly it's back to that like idea of making it like a string yeah hooking it yeah period yeah um another thing for back um that i found that really really helps me is banded warm-ups and and feeling them i feel that contraction and the squeeze that you have with like a, an iso hold like if you get a band and you just tear it apart and mm-hmm. you just squeeze um and you go through like maybe even like a lap hold on you hold the bar out and you just you bring it down something about the band it's like activation and the stress that it has because it's almost like on every part of the movement like it's stressing it it's like the mm-hmm. cables will help me tremendously when i'm moving into my back exercises and everything like it it's really really beneficial for me i agree 100 also okay oh right well yeah and on fitness tiktok people are trying to cancel bands what do you think about that Wait, because i mean? like they're like throw bands away because it's useless especially for like squats like hip thrusts i personally like them and i think it helps a lot with like my muscle growth wow i mean or I've like always heard or like my muscle ups or ass but I like them. But I, I feel it a lot and it helps a lot when I, I find a difference when I don't use them when I do use them. Yeah. I yeah. love them especially because like here's here's my example. Like I for the longest time recently I haven't been warming up with the band, but prior I used to do it every day. Mm-hmm. Um and now I just warm up with the movements and I don't find it as enjoyable and I'll tell you why. Because when I'm warming up, for example, and I'm maybe like trying to develop that mind to muscle connection prior to starting my lift. Mm -hmm. I like, it's like mindful lifting. Mm -hmm. I like to do this a lot. I feel like it's harder to do with weights, you know? So like if I wanted to replicate what a band was giving me, I would have to go to a cable machine Mm -hmm. and I would, I would have to use tons of different attachments Mm -hmm. and bring it down, bring it up. It's so much more efficient for me to have a long band or a couple bands at my feet and I could just grab them and do this and then drop one and put it up here and do this. It's like no, no cape. It's it's more efficient for me. Very much. Like I could use a cable to warm up. I can I can warm up with just the movements that I'm doing. It's not like these warm ups are necessary. I mm-hmm. find that they aid with like my mental presence mm-hmm. and and connecting with the muscle that I'm working. Exactly. And bands are just nice. It helps with activation and mindful mindful mind, mental muscle connection. Yeah. Exactly. That's all. It's not like 
it's gonna make a huge difference for you but it's it's a good warm-up yeah. and i truly do believe in it yeah. yeah i do too and it's like for like my glutes like when i'm when i wear these bands that i i wear to like warm up my glutes um i haven't in a long time mm-hmm. and i i don't enjoy it as much as i used to when i would do it you don't feel not- exercise as much as you used to right yeah i have yeah. to like grab all these weights and like warm up like with a billion things around me instead of before i used to just just have my band mm-hmm. <laughs> and Period. like i can really reach the, the stress that i wanted by mm-hmm. just like holding using a tighter band you know like versus like having a bunch of things around me just just to feel like i was feeling a burn in my glutes before i started you know and i never really overdo my warm-ups i don't want to be like exhausted or fatigued mm-hmm. but a, a band is like that perfect middle middle ground you know agreed Mm. Or like things like your shoulders really f- for me benefit with the with a band. Band, warm- yeah, literally. Yeah. Every single workout that I do it, I have to have a band warm up or else it's gonna be an ass workout for me. Yeah. Literally. And also, um Oh my god, there's something else I was gonna say. I forgot. For upper body tips, maybe? Man, I forgot. You go. Shoulders, back. I don't know. Man. <laughs> Flew out of my mind. <laughs> That's okay. I was going to say something for shoulders. I was going to say um, for shoulders or back in general, there, I have found that like, and this is getting really popular too because of JPG. Mm-hmm. I have found that like anything where you just sort of isolate the variables that can be making you weaker in the exercise um, or not isolate, just remove the variables mm-hmm. can be really beneficial um, and can even connect with the mind to muscle connection because mm-hmm. a lot of the times like we rock like especially mm-hmm. when we're getting familiar with the movements there's a lot of like i don't know i like, think of bent over barbell rows versus or standing overhead press versus seating seated overhead press mm-hmm. right like if you're seated and you're doing shoulder presses you're sort of like eliminating like your back and all of these exactly. things when you're standing you're like your spine is really working you yeah. know like so I found that like those movements, like sometimes I love to do standing as well. Like I do it all the time, actually, it's not sometimes. Mm-hmm. But if you are struggling with like this this connection and this stability, it's really nice to s- sit. Mm-hmm. It's really nice to support your chest on something. Mm-hmm. Like do rows on a bench with mm-hmm. your with your body f- on, Leaning on it. forward. Yeah, and, and it really helps. Like I do barbell rows all the time. I do regular dumbbell rows all the time, but I will always incorporate it, something supported, mm-hmm. like my chest supported, m- seated for things, mm-hmm. you know? And I found that it's super, super beneficial. You can even do curls that way. And it burns, bro. Yeah. You think you do 10 pounds standing up? Try it, try it lying down. Like, yeah, it's bro. really beneficial. Yeah. You're going to be like, what? This weight is heavy? I thought this was lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> Drop it down to five pounds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. Literally, like, I think there's, you know what, with, I want to say weightlifting or just like being in the gym, like it's always little tiny movement, little tiny tweaks that make such a difference. You know, it's not just like squatting. It's like, oh, like if you do this with your feet, push through heel, da, da, da. It's like, yeah. it's like a little, it's like, but we're geeks. You know what? Gym rats it's like are just big nerds. Yeah. Who are in love with fitness and like. <laughs> physio basically yeah and yeah. it's really it's really like if you give your chance self the chance to learn a little bit more about mm-hmm. it you will see how these movements could be altered a little bit to benefit you and what you're doing um we've also talked about this before but like tempo is important mm-hmm. i think i've talked about this did mm-hmm. we even talk about this today tempo? yeah just like you can even adjust how long you spend doing these movements oh, yes. And it changes your lift. You yeah, know? yeah. And there's so there's so much, so much to learn that like honestly, like we're kind of learning ourselves. We're learning ourselves. Yeah. And I think it's just like such such an incredible thing. And that's just like with everything. Like to be honest, that's like with science. To be honest, yeah. Yeah, and with science, you sort of this is science. This is and, science. And you sort of accept the fact that things change all the time. Mm-hmm. And what we know now might not be the truth forever. Exactly. And what we know today might be completely wiped with new information tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Like. And that's what makes this cool. That's why I've always loved science. It's like, we know so much, but know so little at the same time. Yeah. And fitness is, is not like heavily researched. Like everything that researches biology and physiology is more yeah. for med than it is for fitness. Exactly. That's why we don't have a lot of research on supplements. That's why we have to draw pieces together ourselves and be like, hey, because biochemistry says this, then that means that this supplement could possibly benefit us. And mm-hmm. we could be completely wrong. There could be a study that says like, yeah, even though it makes sense, 
when we studied actually and peer reviewed these studies, like it doesn't help with gaining muscle mass. It's like, well, damn, but it's cool to sit there and try to put the pieces together, you know, it is. to be like, hey, if I take citrulline, will it help? Because citrulline helps with these things in my body. You know, like that's cool. And for some things we're right and for some things we're wrong. And, and there's some supplements that we know for sure help creatine. Mm -hmm. That's why I say take your creatine. It's um, the number one search supplement in the market. Yeah, and it's... And most, yeah, most research. Yeah, and it's factual. Like, mm -hmm. well, what, what about it helping is factual. And it's to the point that it's... Dude, there's this, there's this... Do you follow this doctor on TikTok? I love him. He, he time for school. <laughs> yeah, I class dismissed. I love I him. <laughs> He's literally like everything, everything for me. And um, what's... It's cool because he like breaks down studies. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you guys can, what's his app? Dr. Aish, Aish something like that. Okay. We'll, we'll put it down. We'll put it down for you guys. Yeah, um, and I definitely yeah. think he's worth the follow and he educates people and he links the study. It's like, you don't believe him, go read the study, you know? <laughs> so he basically, I love this because people used to always downplay what creatine does. And I used mm -hmm. to say like, people would be like, Look, people would always be like, oh, it is heavily researched. It's an amazing supplement, but it's not crazy. It's not going to do anything crazy. And I used to be like, what? Like, so actually, cre like, I used to be like, creatine is crazy. Like, it's an incredible supplement. And he literally, word for word, came up on my 40 page with the TikTok about that. And I was like, I'm following this guy. <laughs> he, I'd followed, I'd seen him a bunch before, and I loved his stuff, and I'd never really followed. But there was someone basically saying, like, creatine's not a miracle worker. Like, and he's like, actually, like, creatine sort of is a miracle worker. Like, and he links these studies where people who weren't even heavy lifting, weren't even training, because of creatine, gained one extra pound of lean mass. So muscle mass, by the way. Gaining lean mass is no joke. Mm -hmm. And they were older, I think. In a month. They're older and in a month. And That's they're not actually training. crazy. And they're not... Get out. Or like Get heavy out. training, something like that. They're not weightlifting, like weird. Yeah. So it's like, if creatine did that for them, what do you think it would do for do someone for who's eating right, training right, recovering right, young, and weightlifting? It's like... It could obviously, it's not like steroids. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's what I mean by it's like, it's not gonna, but it's like, that is actually crazy. When you it look is. at like how how hard it is pe for people to gain lean mass mm -hmm. in a year, mm -hmm. you know? Um, by the way, I, I hope I didn't misquote. It was either one pound or 0.5 pounds. Either way, that's a massive, 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 it massive. Is. So, you know, like, uh, and, he, and he, once I saw that study and him, I had never seen that. I think I had read about creatine being like that. So then I, that's why I was like, it's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. But when he said, made that video, linked those studies, I was like, this guy's so funny. And it's, it's so cool that he's enlightening in such a digestible way. I love him. He really does break it down. Yeah. So I do recommend like for anyone who's, and you know what? I do like him a lot because he's a doctor, but he, he, he targets fitness a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's that. really rare because a lot of doctors don't target fitness. It's just not something that it's interests not a priority. yeah it's not a priority it's yeah so it's actually really nice to have a credible source who breaks it down for you and who's reliable and like literally has a degree in what he does and like just educates everyone for free for yeah, free that i've always said like the amount of information you just get for free on tiktok like should amazing not even tiktok social media like yeah. you can learn anything you want mm -hmm at your fingertips like use it you know like literally. never leave anything in the air like if you're looking to take a supplement and you're like i wonder if it'll help just like the database of research is free yeah like no one is stopping you like research it and literally, it's worth it but literally. you were saying something more about them there's okay let me know what you think about it there's people who don't take creatine because they're like if you stop working out you're gonna lose it because it's just your muscles are filled with water what do you think about that well, what do you say about okay, that okay that that annoys me for lack of better words mm -hmm. because it comes from an from a, someone who doesn't understand the biochemistry behind creatine mm -hmm. and what it does for us like people will say oh you get stronger because your muscles fill with water so that there's there's more muscle basically so that's why you're stronger like that's completely invalid mm -hmm. like this whole your muscles fill with water thing is like so bizarre to me like yes there is an intracellular like water retention because mm -hmm. the the reaction that creatine undergoes in your muscles when you take it requires water and and it drags like water to the cells but it's that's not the reason you get stronger um and that's not gonna completely deplete once you stop using it you know mm -hmm. it's what makes creatine so effective is creatine changes to phosphocreatine and that gives your muscles atp it mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the water water is like a byproduct exactly so when people make that the main focus of creatine i get really confused because that's 
not at all what creatine does for our muscles. Like, it's not like we take creatine so our muscles get filled with water. Like, that's just what happens in the process. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I personally don't agree at all. And I think it comes from, like, when people try to explain things in simpler terms. Like, mm -hmm. they'll be like, you get, your muscles get energy and they fill with water. Mm -hmm. People will be like, oh, so that's why I'm stronger. Mm -hmm. I have bigger muscles. But it's like, no, it was the opposite. It was the other one that we just talked about. Literally. You know what I'm saying? Literally. And so, yeah. yeah, I don't agree. What do you think about that? I agree with you. Yeah. I think it's just a lack of information. Yes. That's his all. But again, it's like, it's also like when you do research and stuff like that, there's just so many like uh, confounding variables, you know? Like, let's say you stop working out obviously you're gonna lose muscle mass yeah it's not because of the creatine it's not because of the creatine <laughs> yeah. it's because he stopped working out yeah the variables are oh that's always such a yeah. funny like, like and they're like it's this yeah. this is exactly why i'm like mm, no yeah and it that also brings me to like the co the topic of uh waist trainers the sweat bands like people wear that and they swear by it they're like no this made all my fat cry away into yeah. sweat. And I'm like, no, it's because when you when you put that sweat band in, on, it's not like you're sitting on the couch. You're putting it on and to go you, work out. So it's you working yeah, out. It's not this. that sweat band is motivating you to work out. It's, it's you actually <laughs> working out. It's not the damn waist trainer. It's the consistency it's the waist you. trainer brought to it's, you. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally. Like people will be wearing that waist trainer. I, and think go, I swear by it yeah i'm like no you're getting scammed yeah the people that they'll sell them like hey you have to waist train but you also have to go to the gym and then that's when you'll see results it's like guess what's giving you the results <laughs> it's it's a gym it's not the waist <laughs> trainer it's yeah fast. so if you have one please throw it away yeah burn it for me you know it burn it and send a picture <laughs> and you're wasting your time and, and you're harming yourself potentially yeah. like, by like getting one that's like not your size and it's sweat doesn't equal fat loss Never. Never. It's Otherwise, just people water would weight. Sit, sit in the sauna and lose weight. Exactly, exactly. Or lose fat, sorry. They would lose, like, water yeah. weight, for example. Water weight. Speaking of, like, variables and things, this is, like, yeah. on the topic of health and fitness. People are, like, attacking Celsius as of recently. Have you seen it? Liver damage? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, they were hospitalized. And I'm just, like, like... <laughs> well, you want to expand onto that? Yeah, I do. Because Kay. literally, like, take <clears throat> any energy drink or, like, the... the decent ones yeah. and like grab each of the ingredients and web md it and cbi database research and see if there's any negative <laughs> like effects of consumption of those ingredients and 99 times there isn't they're like all like amino acids like vitamins minerals like what is going to harm you is an overconsumption of caffeine above your tolerance mm -hmm. so when you people are out here like drink it because it tastes good but don't have that caffeine tolerance and just randomly start downing three 200 milligram energy drinks a day and then end up in the hospital and they go, oh my God, Celsius almost killed me. I'm like, no, your caffeine consumption did. And by the way, also caffeine is not bad for you. So people always be like, hey, you should cut back from caffeine. Like it could really harm, harm you. There are zero studies that say caffeine is negative. Like literally zero studies, zero, zero, zero. But of course you can OD on caffeine. So mm -hmm. your tolerance is limited, right? Mm -hmm. You have to build up tolerance. Mm -hmm. So when people like drink a lot of caffeine from Celsius and, and then end up saying like Celsius is killing me, it's a very like uneducated outlook on it. And mm -hmm. I definitely think that like these things, like the only thing that could really, really like be bad from these energy drinks <clears throat> is going above your caffeine tolerance because they have a heavy amount of caffeine mm -hmm. and it's too like there's artificial sweeteners which are okay mm -hmm. and if anything they're way better than sugars but artificial sweeteners have a cap and um like the fda approves like let's say 0.5 milligrams per kilogram of your body weight um per day right and it's not that those energy drinks have more than that it's just that like we don't really realize how much of our things have those like all of those like zero calorie like sweet but have nothing in them all of those have artificial sweeteners mm -hmm. usually unless they say that they don't like for you usually actually, everything that you eat has artificial sweeteners especially if there's no carbs in it and it's sweet mm -hmm. if there if you see zero carbs and it's sweet your protein powder has it you know what i'm saying so it's like it's easy and if you drink diet cokes everything that's like zero calorie and is it sweet it's because they remove the carbs, the sugars, by putting artificial sweeteners in it that are zero calorie. And those artificial sweeteners are okay for you. There's also that argument that they're bad for you. Mm -hmm. They're not. Zero studies that say that. If anything, like replacing that with your sugars with that is way better. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a limit to them. And the cap is really high. It's really, really high. So you can get by without ever hitting it. But when everything we consume 
especially in the fitness world, we're like zero calories, zero calories, sweet but not sweet. You end up hitting this gray area where it's like, how much did you have, you know? And and I think those are the only two things that could potentially be bad in an energy drink if mm-hmm. it's like a decent one. Other than that, it's literally like vitamin B13, like vitamin, you know what I'm saying? Like, how is that going to harm you? Exactly. Yeah, yeah 100%. Again, confounding variables. Yeah. Yeah. People be like, yeah, it's Celsius, but it's like, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Celsius. Probably like, dealing with so much right now. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Um, um, I hope you guys really like take whatever we said into, you know, consideration and take it with salt or whatever. And yeah. I, we hope this benefits you and your journey some way. Um, yeah. Maybe take something with you and... and Maybe you don't, and you research, and you t- I, that's the be- and best. And then you thing. can inform us, yeah. Because you know what, I think it's really important to like always be open to like learning. You I know, agree. yeah. So if you find something out, you let us know, and we want to be educated as well. Yeah, yeah. So we love you guys as always, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.